still here? Yes, I want to see the British Consul. My dear girl, he left hours ago. But I must see him. Sorry, you'll have to come back tomorrow. Between 9.30 and 5. It says so quite clearly outside. But I must see him. Please, you call him for me. It's out of the question. He's attending an official dinner. Oh, then perhaps you can help me. I am Gerda Sandor. Nadia Sandor is my sister. Professor Sandor? Yes. I read about her escape to Britain. I want to follow. Only I need help to get away from Slavosk. Quite impossible to do anything tonight, Miss Sandor. Tomorrow, I'll arrange for the consul to see you first thing tomorrow. Secret Service branch. America, CIA, France, Desium Bureau, England, MI5. NATO also has its own. A messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. Come in, Drake. Oh. Ah, well. Well, you've taken your pause, Mr. Hardy. I'm very impressed. You know, you telephoned me in New York. Your voice on the phone was marked urgent. Now, the flight over here to London, to say the least of it, was only mildly entertaining. Oh, no, come on, Mr. Hardy. Be kind to a depressed pilgrim. A small piece of whiskey and an equal amount of conversation. May I help myself? Yes, of course. I got a problem, Drake. Professor Nadia Sandor. I'm very intuitive. My extrasensory apparatus is highly developed and keenly sensitive to perceptions. That is why my jealous rivals call me the man with the built-in crystal ball. A clumsily phrased tribute, but fully deserved. Also, I uh, happen to take a look at the file on your desk. Well, what does your crystal ball tell you about Professor Sandor? Well, the message reads, Yankee, go home. When the job is done, Drake, what is the job, Mr. Hardy? Clairvoyant powers failing, Drake. Oh, only my eyesight. I can't see down to the next uh, piece of uh, paper in this. And I was just beginning to think of you as superhuman. What's the problem? Well, as you guessed, Professor Sandor. She's a young woman of exceptional scientific reputation. She's a wonderful mathematician. She will undoubtedly join one of our advanced research teams if she's allowed to stay in this country. Why shouldn't she? Well, the method of her escape was a little too slick. It was almost contrived. See, unfortunately, the scientists in this country only know by reputation. She might easily be an imposter. Oh, now, you're a disease, Mr. Hardy. You're poisoned by your occupation. You must think that everything has to have a, an ugly twist. Many things have, Drake. I think you'd better see you, Professor Sandor. She's in there now. She's being questioned by a committee of scientists and security men, people who know a bit about her background, days of her youth. Come on. All right. And after your success in the National Laboratories, you were sent from your home in Slavosk. And now, madame, will you tell us how you managed your escape to West Germany? Germany? Here you are. I was being flown from Slavosk to Eastern Germany to the Scientific Congress. Plane developed engine trouble. The Eastern airfield was 30 miles away. The West Berlin airfield a good deal nearer. But the plane did land in West Berlin. It was not premeditated. The crew, myself, the other passengers, we um, were taken into a waiting room and made comfortable. The idea came to me suddenly. I had never been so close to escape before. The rest you know. We slipped out of the waiting room, contacted a West Berlin official and asked for political asylum. And was granted it. And I have to thank you all for this. Professor Sandor, you're sure there was no complicity between you and the pilot of the plane? <laughs> None. But if he had approached me, I would have agreed immediately. Are you aware that this engine failure was found later to be just a simple petrol block? Yes, I have been told this. Can you explain why they chose to land at an alien airfield when a few more minutes in the air would have cleared the trouble? 
I am not a pilot. Professor Sandor, your family, would you mind telling us something about them? My family. My uh, mother was killed during the war in Slavosk. My father was killed during the uprising. You have a sister? I had a sister. She was only nine years old when I was taken from Slavosk. I've never seen her since. I have given up hope. For me, she died many years ago. You are wrong, Professor Sandor. She's still alive. Oh, she seemed very sure of her facts. A little glib, didn't you think rather too glib? Oh, no, there's just a possibility that... It's a fascinating problem, Mr. Hardy, fascinating. It's a problem. There's a question that's going to be asked in the House of Commons tomorrow. What assurance can the government give that Professor Sandor has passed all security screening and that her identity has been established beyond a shadow of doubt? Well, now, what would they do? I mean, supposing that is the real Professor Sandor, the first thing her ex-employers would do would be to try to discredit her, to prevent you from using her. I mean, wouldn't we do the same thing? I mean, supposing one of our scientists took it into his head to go over to the other side, wouldn't we do exactly the same? Uh, haven't we done exactly the same? Yes, but Drake, there's no need for speculation in this case. Here's a signal from our legation in Slavosk. Two days ago, a young woman applied there to be got out to London to join her sister. That young woman was Gerda Sandor. Oh, well, that's just great. We just wait until she gets to London, huh? Yes, but unfortunately, Gerda Sandor is in Vova prison in Slavosk. The state security police picked her up. Routine procedure. It's too bad we can't use her for positive identification. We can use her, and we will. Well, how are we going to do that? It's perfectly simple. You will go to Slavosk, you will get Gerda Sander out of Lvov prison, and you will bring her here to me. Oh, <laughs> all right. Do you remember Mikhail Radek? Mikhail Radek. He will contact you in Slavosk. He will tell you the how and the when. Mike Radek. Oh, just fancy that. Slavosk? and Mikhail Radek, spy for hire, sometimes saboteur, constant provocateur, services available to both East and West. Hates nobody, loves everybody. Ready to kiss or kill, if the price is right. My sometime comrade, Mikhail Radek. Oh, Mike, what have you been up to? <laughs> <laughs> I am never up to anything. I am here and there. East and west. Who pays best? You're a scoundrel, Mike. But lovable. At heart, I think I'm an idealist. Oh, really? What do you believe in, Mike Radek? I believe in the philosophy... Of hard cash. But without pain. Without bloodshed. Just for fun. And for your pocket. <laughs> I think the rich must help to feed the poor a little bit. I don't think you love me anymore, Drake. You're um, going to play this one straight, aren't you, Mike? Drake, you know me. I'm on your side. Oh, yes, I pay well, so you're on my side. <laughs> I have to live. You're still not dead. Uh, what can I do? I try. And now my poor old mother's deathbed prophecy begins to worry me. I will end my days on the gallows. <laughs> My poor old mother. My poor old mother. <laughs> ah. Now I feel better. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. No, Mike, we have a problem here. The problem? To get Gerda Sando out of the Volva prison and take her to London. Correct? Correct. We gotta move fast. Two Arbo agents are on their way here to take her back to the capital. I know who they will be, Glatsanov and Parzinski. Uh, Parzinski, I seem to have heard that name before somewhere. Parzinski is a good man. He will be in charge of the operation. Glatsanov is just an oaf in uniform. Are they known in Slavosk? No. <laughs> you begin to see, yeah, huh? I begin to see. Glatsanov and Parzinski will go by train from the capital. They will check in at the Hotel Blinka. Where they will hang around until morning before securing Gerda Sandor. Parzinski and Glatanov will have a whole evening on their hands. They will be in the mood for a little uh, foolishness. The foolishness will be arranged. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
release order. Three copies. All is in order, Comrade Pasinski. Now, if you will please sign the receipt that I have delivered to you the person of Gerda de saint -Dorin. Of course, Comrade Nagor. You will be transferred to the prison in the capital in the custody of Comrade Pasinski. Thank you, Comrade Nagor. It's a pleasure, Comrade. My very best wishes to Comrade Kosevsky. Of course. Take her to the car. Mike Raddock took his money and disappeared. All I had to do was to get the girl across the border. only nine years old, too young to understand very much. When she went away... You lived with your... My father. He was killed during the troubles. And after that, Miss Sandor? After that, I was alone. All my family had been killed. I was alone. You made an effort to find your sister. When Nadia was taken... went away. She was never spoken about in our house. And didn't I hear about the escape? The aeroplane to Berlin? I thought she was dead. Would you two would like to be alone together? Yes, please. Oh, yeah. Allow me. This way, please. Interesting gadget we had fixed up. Oh, yes, Mr. Hardy. I have seen them before in the most unexpected places. A kind of mechanized peeping Tom. I didn't know where you were. You were alive or dead? I tried to write, to find you so many times. There'll be happier days for us, like, like in Ill. Ill? Yes, you remember. How we used to go to the brook, it was behind the house. And how we used to swim out to the raft together. But, but Nadia, I, I, I don't remember. <laughs> No, no, it's not possible. 
sister. She must be my sister. I feel it. Miss Sandra, you're only saying that because you want her to be. But when she took me in her arms. So much has happened. War, revolution, suffering. Is it not possible that Nadia could forget? Could quite honestly forget? Miss Sandra, you don't believe that. You don't believe she's your sister. You won't admit it to us, but you've already admitted it to yourself. But she must be my sister. I've given up hope. She's all I have left. She must be my sister. Miss Sandra, is there anything that she would know about? Something that she would never forget? Do you know what I mean? Some sort of family joke or a place that she would yes. particularly... Yes, there is one thing. Mulki. Mulki? Oh, come in, Professor. You'll be happy to know that we've finished questioning your sister. She will be allowed to remain here in England. I see no reason why not. And are you satisfied about me? Not yet, Professor. There's one question your sister would like to ask you. Nadia, do you remember Mulki? Mulki? Of course you remember. How you cried when you went to the university and you had to leave him behind. It was so long ago. But Mulki followed you all the way to the capital. And then when you came home from the university at Easter. Home for Easter, yes. You cried. And you said you would never leave him again. But Gerda, I don't remember this man. Ah. But, Nadia, Mulki was your little spaniel. Spaniel? Who is this woman? She's lying. You're trying to track me. She is not my sister. That is now quite evident. I'm uh, sorry to inflict even more questioning upon you, but I do assure you that I'm not trying to trick you or to trap you, but merely to find out the truth. Truth, freedom, justice. How glibly we use those words. Is she your sister? I longed for her to be my sister. But is she your sister? No. And yet when you came into the office, you accepted her. You embraced her. And she embraced me. Ah, yes, but she was a mere child the last time that she saw her sister. And my sister was a mere child when I saw her last. You don't remember your dog, Mulkey? There never was a dog, Mulkey. Do you remember Professor Lautner? Lautner? Yes, Heinz Lautner. He used to be an instructor at the university. He's now in London. He says he remembers Nadia Sandor very well. Would you like to meet him? I never heard of Heinz Lautner. Did you know that Mr. Hardy is arranging to have you deported? Why doesn't he arrange to send us both back, this Gerda and me, and see which one they will punish? You know, I feel sorry for your Mr. Hardy. I do not envy him his sleepless nights. What will happen to her? Oh, she'll uh, be deported. Oh, no, you can't. You don't know what that will mean. It'll mean nothing if she's not Nadia Sandor. Yes, but I can't be sure. And Hardy can't afford to take the chance, not even if you're now prepared to swear to it. Oh, incidentally, uh, does the name Heinz Lautner mean anything to you? Heinz Lautner? Yes, he used to be a professor at the university. Oh, yes. Uh, professor Lautner. In, in Slavosk? You remember him? Yes, I remember the name, and... And I remember Nadia speaking about him. Oh, good. That'll help to establish him. Establish? Yes, uh, Lautner is in London. He says that he remembers Nadia very well. I see. Now, look, if I come round for you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, we'll uh, go and collect Lautner and take him along to confront her. 
I'm sorry, I know how you feel about this, Gerda, but don't you think it's better to settle it one way or the other, once and for all? Last night, you were quite right. It's better to be settled once and for all. Yes. to meeting Professor Lautner uh, and keeping a professional eye on a, a talented amateur. Shall we go inside? Yes. <laughs> All right, Mike, let's go in. Oh, Mike, 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 Mikhail, up to your old games again. Assignment, discredit Nadia Sandor, have her sent back. Well, congratulations, you handled it very well, both of you. From you, I take this as a compliment. I suppose you have everything very carefully worked out, eh, Mike? Oh, very carefully. Or just as a matter of professional interest, uh, how are you going to keep up the deception after Lautner and I are found dead here? That is the next step, isn't it? Oh, not here. You, you must not allow these absorbing details to worry you. A car accident on the way back, something very simple. Right. Professor Lautner! You're wasting your time, Mike. It's empty. What? The apartment's empty. Professor Lautner, Professor Heights. Lochner won't identify Nadia because he doesn't exist. I'm sorry, Mike. It was a figment of the imagination. I invented him the way that you invented Nadia's charming sister. He's lying. No, I'm afraid not. But you made a mistake when you told us the apartment was empty. You just take a look out the window, would you? It's the most absorbing view. But please. Well, it's the same at the back. You're in a trap, Braddock. Discretion is the better part of valor is a very fine saying. I'm obliged. <laughs> I suppose you couldn't say that I was working as a, a double agent on your side. No, no. Uh, the, then perhaps I had a change of heart at the last moment and handed the girl over to you. You double-crossing twister. Oh, darling, this is too close to the truth. Please, Mr. Drake, how much would it cost? When you play this sort of game, you must expect to pay the consequences. You will both be deported. Please. Mr. Drake, you don't understand. I can't go back. If you please. If I am deported, it will be to America. I got papers to prove I'm an American citizen. No, they won't let you in, Mike. In Japan? I got papers? They won't let you in there either. Iceland? I got papers. No, but don't worry. You'll get a cool enough reception where you're going. Excuse me, please. Drake, if they need a character witness at my trial... I'll do you the favor of staying away. Bye, Mike. Professor Sandor. I'm uh, sorry we've not yet been able to find out if your sister is still alive, but we won't give up hope. We'll go on trying to find her for you. And with our uh, unrivaled knowledge of tricking and trapping, who knows? How can I thank you enough, Mr. Drake? Oh, please don't do that. It's just that I couldn't bear the thought of all those sleepless nights that our poor Mr. Hardy would have had. 